Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to another episode. I am excited to have you with me as we continue to move through the speed of success for first year execs. I hope that you're enjoying the series. I'm getting a lot of positive feedback. I love that this is helping you, challenging you, and freeing you to help you get the results that you know you are capable of generating at the executive level. Let's go ahead and dive into the topic for today. If you've been working with me and listening to this for the prior two episodes, you know that we're tackling reason number three in this series as to what holds us back and slows our speed down. I'm going to remind you again, I'm going to continue to mention this over and over and over again. It takes the typical executive an average of 12 months to generate consistent, high-level results as an executive. That's your whole first year as an executive. What we're doing this entire month is eliminating that lag. And we're going to help you shrink it down to at least six, four. And then in our program that we teach here at Legend Leaders called Career Confidence, we actually shrink that 12 months down to two months. Okay. And so we do that by helping you clear your mind and focus on the right things, which is we, which we, we talked about in the first episode. I'm struggling to talk again. I get so excited about this topic. My, my mind is going faster than my mouth. So forgive me. I'm so excited. The first episode, we talked about all the things that happen internally in our mind that slow us down and, and adjust our focus, right? It prevents us from focusing effectively. Last week, we talked about the, the frustration and the fact that we feel like we need to earn it and how we inject the guesswork or the trial and error into the preparation and, and, and the ability to figure out how to generate results in our executive careers and how we just need to stop doing that. And then today, we're going to talk about the fact that we all want to feel safe and we want to feel safe while we're getting results and the things that we actually do to, to do that, that sort of derail and again, slow down our progress. So let's think about it this way. I'm getting ready to take a trip. Okay, let's say that I'm getting ready to take a trip and I want to go to Disney World. Well, am I going to fly? Am I going to drive? Am I going to drive my own car? Am I going to rent a car? Am I going to fly first class? Am I going to, you know, take a, a charter plane? What am I going to do? How am I going to get there? Could I even take a train or a bus? What are all the ways? Well, for me, I live in Charleston, South Carolina, so I'm going to drive. That just makes the most sense. Perfect. Okay, I figured it out. My destination is Disney World, and the way that I'm going to get there is I'm going to drive my car, and I've already got the time frame mapped out. Well, as the time gets closer for me to take this trip, I start thinking, and I'm like, you know what? It'd be really good if I took my parents with me. I'd love for them to come and spend some time with us and, and see the kids and enjoy that time together. Well, my parents live in Asheville, North Carolina. That's where I'm from, and so they still live there, and so I start thinking, I'm like, you know what? It would make this trip much better if I take my parents. So maybe what I'll do is I'll drive to Asheville and pick them up, and then I'll drive all the way back, and we'll go to Disney World. And, and that's, the, that's how I'm going to handle it. That, that would make me feel really, really good about the trip. I'm going to feel so much better about it. It's going to be a much better trip if I do it that way. Well, what have I just done in this process of mapping out this vacation? I've taken, I, I know the end result. I know what I want to achieve, Disney World vacation. And, and I've taken the first pathway on how to get there, but I've muddled it, right? I've, I've taken a desire, a need, a want. And I've injected it into the very simple process of driving to Disney World, and I've complicated it. By adding my parents to the process, now maybe I should fly from Asheville, or maybe they shouldn't go at all, or maybe they should meet me here. But I've added a complexity. And you can see that right now as I'm just talking through logistics of, of solving this problem of reaching the end point of going to Disney World. Well, why are you doing the same thing as a first-year executive? Because that's what you're doing. Let me break it down to you this way. Your company has told you exactly what the endpoint needs to look like. They've defined Disney World for you. They've said you need to get to this endpoint. This is what it looks like to be a successful executive in this organization. They've given you a job description. They've defined your bonus parameters for you. They've told you all of these things, right? Open book test. That's what I call it, right? Success should be an open book test. And the majority of organizations, especially large corporations, give you those details, right? 
They've defined Disney World for you, your destination. You have to figure out how to get to Disney World, okay? Are you going to fly? Are you going to drive? All the things. And that's what you're in the process of doing. You're trying to figure out how to get executive level results. You're defining your how. But what starts happening along the way is you start injecting all these pieces and things that make you feel good, that make you feel safer. Oh, I want my parents to go with me. Oh, I want to stop at Bucky's on the way. Oh, I want to, right? We start putting in all these extra things and we lose sight of the end point. We lose sight of the fact that we're, we're just trying to go to Disney World. That's what we're trying to achieve. So let's get there. Yeah, it may make you feel better to add some things in on the way, but that doesn't mean you're going to get the results that you need to get. And that is the third barrier that happens and slows down your progress and why it takes on average 12 months to get there. Let me break it to you down like this. Let, let me be really, really clear. Ten years prior, remember we defined results in the first episode of this series as being the doer doing tasks, being the executor, right? And the company valued that. That's what got you promoted time after time after time. And you're really good at that. Man, you feel so good at executing and getting results and, and checking boxes and doing tasks, right? It's not what you do anymore as an executive. You feel like a fish out of water. And so while you're learning and you're, you're trying to figure it out and you're getting a little bit of results, but you're not, you don't feel safe and you're frustrated with yourself and you're working through all three of these barriers, right, that we've outlined, as you're working through all three of these, you want to do some things to make you feel safe, to make you still feel like you're valuable to the organization. And so what you do and what a lot of executives do is they go back to their old ways. They start doing some tasks. They start helping with other functions. Instead of delegating out to their team and leading through people and figuring out how to do that, they do it themselves. And so, yeah, they feel really good on the inside, but they're not generating executive results because the company has already defined Disney World for you. They've given you the destination. You doing all of the checkbox, the work, the execution isn't getting you to Disney World. It may slowly, okay, but your team could be doing all of the tasks and the execution work while you're focusing on the things that only you can do as an executive to get you to Disney World. You get it? Does that make sense? In other words, stop doing the work that isn't going to get you to the destination that your company has defined for you in your job description, in your bonus parameters, and all of the things that the company has clearly told you you must do to be successful in this new role. Yeah, there are a lot of things that you're great at. That's awesome. You're always going to be great at them, okay? But don't revert back to doing those things because they make you feel good on the inside. Just because they make you feel good and feel safe because you feel like you are contributing and adding value to the organization doesn't mean that you actually are, okay? Really, really important. And this is another lag. It's one of the bigger lags that people do. They try to do a thousand different things instead of the five things that's going to get them to the destination or the end point that the company has given them to reach. Right? So get the workbook because the workbook is going to help you walk through and answer these questions around am I doing and taking action that makes me feel better and makes me feel value or feel valuable and I feel like I'm adding value to the organization rather. But in reality, the way that the company has defined how I add value and what those end results look like are very different than what I'm actually doing. Okay, that's what you've got to figure out. We've got to open our eyes. We've got to acknowledge it and we've got to push past it. Okay, all right, go get the workbook, work through the pieces. Join me next week because next week I'm going to give you a key resource and a tool that we share here in the Legend Leaders program, Career Confidence, that you're going to use and apply in order to help you move forward and again, get that the, the executive success with speed. I'll see you next week. As always, go and be legendary.